Hey everybody, thanks for taking the time to check out this video. It's going to be a very quick and easy paper mache recipe that you can do at home. The purpose of this video is mainly for my students. Right now we're currently in social distancing, so we aren't in the classroom and I'm not able to help them step by step. But I also made it geared towards any teachers out there who would like to do this project in the future once we are back in the classrooms. And I also made this video for any parents out there who are looking for something fun and easy to do so that their kids can stay occupied. This is such an easy craft to do at home. This is one of the most fun projects that my students enjoy every single year. So here are a couple of pictures from open house night. It's such a fun experience because my students, they take their paper mache bases home, they get to decorate it with their friends and their family. But basically in the classroom, all I do is help them to make the actual base. So in this video, you'll be able to see how I make that base with them, but this video will not show how to decorate it. That's up to the student and that's up to the families and how they want to make it look. But I will be showing you a little bit of how I decorated my panda towards the end of the video. So here's an example of a panda I quickly put together. One thing I completely forgot to do in the video, as you're going to see, is I didn't use a color balloon. Make sure you use a color balloon with your students or with your kids at home because it's so much easier for them to see if they miss any spots while they're covering the balloon with the pieces of paper. I always do this in the class with my students, but for some reason, this time I chose white. So what you're gonna need today for your paper mache base, you're going to need a balloon. You're going to need liquid starch. Now this is the brand that I always use with my class. It is, I believe it's called Stay Flow, Staff Flow, not really sure. So this liquid starch you can find at Walmart. It is a little bit difficult to find. I would definitely make sure that you check online before you go to the store. So make sure you do try and get this ahead of time. Don't try and go out the day of because most likely the store won't have it. And you are going to need flour. I just use regular all-purpose flour. You're also going to need a container to put your flour and your liquid starch into when you're ready to make the liquid. Now I know paper mache is usually made with you know newspaper but I like to use copy paper. It's so much easier to paint over. I usually find that I can cover my animal with only one coat of paint. I've had students in the past who used newspaper and they had to do three to four coats of paint just so that you wouldn't be able to see the actual newspaper through the paint. So first I'm gonna do is I'm going to shred this copy paper into tiny pieces and we're going to be dipping these into our mixture of flour and liquid starch. So for my mixture, I usually use about half a cup of flour to every one cup of liquid starch. So once you put the flour and the liquid starch into the container, you can begin to mix it until it turns into a glue-like consistency. So the thing that I've learned about using paper mache for the past seven years with my students is that it doesn't have to be perfect. So I found that having my students make it themselves is such a fun experience for them that they're going to remember forever. So if some students add more liquid starch or more flour, it's okay, you know, just balance it out as long as you have some type of, like I said, glue-like consistency, it'll be fine. And I usually just use a wooden stick like this. I was able to buy a pack of, I believe, 24 off of Amazon. And it wasn't that expensive. I think it was around less than 12 bucks. And I love using these in the classroom. There's something that, you know, can be thrown away right after. Or if you want to clean them, they could be reused for the next year. They're easy to store. So now we're going to move on to the balloon step. And this step is the hardest for so many students because well, I teach third grade, so a lot of my students are not able to blow the balloon and they're always asking for help. So what you can do is you can blow up all the balloons the night before and then have some extra ones in the classroom just in case the kids pop them or something happens. If one deflates, you do have those extras. As you can 
Etsy, I blew the balloon about a medium sized. I know some of my students in the past have done snakes, so they went to Party City and found some um, balloons that are a lot longer in length. So when it comes to balloons, you know, don't feel limited or like you can't use a certain kind. This is just the one I prefer to use with my students because um, I just usually have them make the body out of this and then they can attach the legs out of cardboard. They can use styrofoam for the head. They can just be creative. And the main part for me mostly is that they just make the face of the animal. They don't have to make the entire body, but if they want to, that's totally fine. So now we're gonna get ready for the first layer. If you want, you can cover your area, your work area with some newspaper or butcher paper or tablecloth. You can even buy those tablecloths at the 99 cent store. But I am I just found some paper bags because I don't have time to go to the store right now. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a piece of paper and you're going to dip it into the mixture and then take off any extra and then put it right onto the balloon and you can use your finger to flatten it out. Something that I tell my students is try and lay down the next strip that you dip into the mixture right next to the last one. What you can also do is once you dip the piece of paper, you can use your fingers to take off any of the extra liquid and stick it onto your balloon. And something I forgot to mention is if you feel like there's way too much of the mixture all over the balloon, try and add some dry pieces of copy paper right over and then use the excess that keeps falling off and just put it right on top of that dry piece. So this is the perfect example of some dry pieces that I was able to just stick onto the balloon because there was so much, you know, of the mixture just coming off. Once um, I stick them on, then I can get a little bit of the mixture and just put it on top to smooth it out. I know it looks very messy right now, but I promise it'll all look great at the end. So once you're done covering your balloon entirely for the first layer, you can double check by just spinning it around just to make sure you didn't miss any spots. So there you have it. So something I do in the classroom when the students are done with the first layer is I take a piece of paper, it could be construction paper or it could be cardstock so that could be a lot sturdier and I just fold it in half or I cut it into two rectangular pieces and then what I would do in the classroom is staple it to make it a lot longer. And then I would staple the other side so that it looks like this, so that I could be like a balloon holder. And the reason why this is so awesome is because you can write each student's name onto the piece of paper. So that way there won't be any confusion in class of whose is whose. So this is a great way for the students to remember which one is theirs. But because I'm not in the classroom right now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this balloon my first layer right on top of this container just like that and have it dry there overnight. So here's the finished product. This is the first layer. And like I said, it doesn't have to be perfect. This is the first layer as long as they get some paper on there and as long as it's not like dripping so that all of the paper is just falling off, this should work fine. So I usually just let this dry overnight and then the students can come in the next day and then they'll be able to continue the second layer of their paper mache. So it's now the second day and as you can see, the balloon is completely dry. Well, the paper on the balloon is completely dry. And what I did was this morning, I just rotated it over so that the bottom, which was more wet, um, was facing up and it can dry. 
So in the classroom, what I do is my students will come in the morning, the next day after doing the first layer, and they'll rotate their balloons over or I'll help them rotate their balloons over. And then it'll dry for a few more hours. Then after lunch, that is when we start doing the second coat. Sometimes depending on whether we are rushing or whether the student already did a really good job on their first and second coat, I usually won't go and have them do a third one. We'll usually just do two, but it all depends on you and how much time you have. Um, if you want it to be a little bit more sturdier, then obviously you can do three, even four coats. But I found that in my classroom, two coats is totally fine and that works. So I actually didn't touch the mixture, the paste at all overnight and it looks pretty good still. So if you want, you can always add a little bit more of the liquid starch so that it can be a little bit more liquidy or add more flour, whatever you would like to add. But overall, I didn't even have to do anything and it didn't dry up and it's totally fine to keep using for the second layer. So as you can see, the balloon is completely dry and we are ready for our second coat. And did I forget to mention, this is a very good arm workout. So I just finished my second layer and I'm thinking I might do a third just to be on the safe side, but it's looking really good. So I'm gonna do the same thing as yesterday. I'm just gonna leave it here to dry overnight. And then in the morning, I'll rotate it so that all of the liquid that collects at the bottom will then be at the top and it'll just, you know, dry evenly. It's the second coat. So it's now day three, well actually day four. I decided to do a third coat. So just in case I wasn't clear about this in the video because I was rushing the application process and I did speed it up, um, just make sure for each layer you are covering the whole balloon. So for the first, second, and third layers, you are going to use the paper to cover the balloon entirely. So here's an up close shot of the paper mache base with the third layer already dry. I'm so happy with how it turned out. I love how sturdy it is. As you can see, when it dries, you do have um, some of the flour, which dries up into a kind of a yellowish color. And that's totally fine because you're going to be painting over it anyways. And I already got a head start and painted one side of the balloon because today I'm going to be decorating it and making it look like a panda. So here it is guys. Um, the eyes are still not completely dry, but considering I put this together very quickly, I'm very happy with how it turned out. So thanks for watching this video. If you guys have any comments or suggestions when it comes to making paper mache, maybe you have a quicker way or an easier way to make it, let me know in the comments below. And please give it a thumbs up if it was of any help. Thanks guys.